We have massive news that comes through overnight. Yesterday, it was James Harden to the Los Angeles Clippers. Yeah. And then now this morning, we get the bombshell dropped, Michael, that in Vegas, Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels and general manager Dave Ziegler were fired. And now enter the human element as well, Michael. Your son, Mick, OC in Vegas, yeah. caught in the crossfire as well. You've, you've been in this business a long time. You've seen it all. It doesn't get any easier, though, when these types of things happen. Well, you know, it's always hard for your son because, you know, no matter how old they are, they're still little boys, right? And so you always want to try to do something to protect your kids. And unfortunately, as they get older, you can't. And so it's harder actually on me than it is him. I mean, everybody keeps telling them they're sorry. But look, when they entered this profession, both of them, they accepted the code of conduct that goes with this profession, which is you're vulnerable. You're going to get fired at some point during your career. It's happened to the greatest coach of all time and Paul Brown. It's happened to bad coaches. It happens to everybody. You move on. And this isn't going to be the moment that defines you, but how you react will define you. And so it is unfortunate. I feel bad for McDaniels because he is a friend. And, you know, this is the second job in a row where he hasn't even gotten two full seasons at a place where they were told they were going to try to rebuild. And some of it's on them, right? They've made some horrendous decisions within the building that they have to be accountable for. And the one thing I do know in my time in the NFL is when you don't come in with a plan, when you don't come in with a, with a clear idea about where we're going at the quarterback position, the owner is going to take a lot of heat for not winning. And if your owners can stand, handle it and stays off of Twitter, pretty good. But David Tepper said something very revealing, the owner of the Carolina Panthers this summer. They asked him, what's the hardest thing about being an owner? And he said, Twitter. Yeah. And so the social media and all those aspects come together. And if your owner's not bought into the plan or doesn't trust you to run the plan, then your time is limited. So life goes on. You know, he's got a contract. He'll be fine. Josh McDaniels has four more years at a ridiculous amount of money. He'll be fine. So will Dave Ziegler. And the Raiders will be fine, too, because what we know about these organizations is they go on. They go on. But at some point, Mark Davis is going to have to say, OK, I trust this guy enough to withstand all the criticism. It's going to take some time to rebuild this program. Right. They will go on with linebacker coach Antonio Pierce in the interim as the head coach assistant GM Champ Kelly will be interim GM and the Raiders will then conduct their coaching search moving forward in the offseason. But you mentioned it and I said to you off air before we got started today this I was shocked by the timing of it because it did feel kind of like a knee jerk reaction to a bad performance on Monday night. Maybe it goes twofold the last couple weeks with the decision making from McDaniels to go ahead and start Brian Hoyer. And then last week, Jimmy Garoppolo, probably the nail in the coffin there in his performance. Um, but to me, it's just, again, you said it one and a half years into a six year contract where you're given the expectation up front that you'll have the opportunity to rebuild. And I hear so many people today on the radio talking about how, oh, well, he inherited a 10 win team that went to the playoffs and went toe to toe with the Bengals and the Bengals ended up going to the Super Bowl. But like I was doing a deep dive into that season, Michael, and yeah, they went 10 and seven, but that Raiders team was outscored by 65 points. They went seven and two in games that were decided by seven points or less. So you have that luck factor, that four game winning streak to end the season concluded with wins over quarterbacks, Nick Mullins and Drew Locke. Carson Wentz had chosen not to be vaccinated. You remember it's the COVID year. He ends up um, coming back from the COVID list like hours before that game and their young core, all of the draft picks, the first round picks that haven't worked out for the Raiders that aren't McDaniel's fault. Like I'm not trying to right. make excuses for the Raiders in this spot, but it's not like he inherited like this team that was really blossoming and on this trajectory to make an incredible run. I feel like they were kind of set up for failure and then weren't given a lot of opportunity to kind of build something. Well, I, I think that's what Mark Davis has to look at, right? He's got to decide to himself, like, how am I going to repair this? Because in the last, since 2002, since we went to the Super Bowl in two, they've only had two seasons, two seasons of which they had a positive point differential. Two. They had one in 2016 when they went to the playoffs and lost that wild card game, right? And they had one in 2010 with Tom Cable. And that was just 39 yards. Other than that, they have not even come close, not come close 
to a difference in point differential. Gruden took over a team that, you know, his first year there, he's minus 177. The next year, he's down to minus 106. Then he's down to minus 44. So it, th- this team hasn't been really in, in play. Now, if you talk to Raider fans, they think they're right there, right? And then you look at the draft picks of which, again, Mark Davis has given people the authority to run those picks. And so, you know, look, there's two players from the for, – you go back the last six drafts, there's only really two players, Jacobs and Colton yeah. Miller, that are contributing at a level that you would expect for th- first three-round picks. I mean, the, the, the 21 draft is a complete washout with Leatherwood and all those guys, and then the 22 with Ruggs and everybody else is a washout. But nobody wants to hear about that, right? It's the great Lou Holtz line where Lou Holtz says 80% of the people uh, don't care about your problems and the other 20% are happy you have them. And so nobody's going to listen to this is really not a good situation in terms of the talent level. They saw they went to the playoffs in 11, 21, excuse me, and they think they're a playoff team. I knew watching the Monday night game, I was sitting with Big Daddy, and I could tell from Aikman the way he was treating the situation without really any kind of objectivity towards the coaching staff that he probably knew something was going to happen. And so, you know, that's what happens in our profession. You accept it. You move on. Life goes on. You, that's why you have contracts. And, you know, you can sit here and make a thousand excuses, but at the end of the day, you don't win close games. You're going to get fired. Yeah. You go through this list, Michael, specifically with first round picks. You mentioned Ruggs, Damon Arnett, Alex Leatherwood, Jonathan oh, Abram. Terrible. They declined the option for Cleland Farrell. They they declined the option for Josh Jacobs as well. He ends up obviously earning the contract last year. But you break it down, five of their last seven first round picks are no longer with the team. And when we talk about patience with 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 certain coaches and how they go on to progress or not. Kyle Shanahan, we talk about him all the time on this program. 10 and 22, his first two seasons in San Francisco. Dan Campbell, 419 and 1 to start his Lions head coaching career. He's gone 13 and 4 since. And so you look at some of these coaches, how they get the opportunity to build on it. Even John Gruden started 11 and 21 in his second stint with the Raiders. But yeah. moving forward. But, but again, he yeah. had they had a positivity from the social. There, nobody was on them. This is look, Josh. For whatever reason, partly because of the Patriot way, partly because of no one really believes in that. I mean, Mark Davis w- was getting pressure to fire him last year, the first year in a six year contract. I mean, think about that. I mean, there was a lot of that. And when you get that behind, when that comes behind you, it's hard to overcome. And they started this year truly probably believing they needed to win. And they weren't they're not a good enough team. Here's the here's the funny thing. Like the decision to fire Carr wasn't to, to change from Carr wasn't just one person. It was a universally organizational decision that probably wanted to go back in time to do it earlier. So when you fired Carr, which was probably the right thing as an organization, you couldn't expect that you're going to turn this around unless you got a first round, unless you got drafted a quarterback, which mm-hmm. there wasn't one when you picked. So like at some point you have to grin and bear the rebuild. And if you're not ready to do it, or in Mark Davis's defense, maybe he felt like Ziggler and McDaniels weren't the right people to rebuild his franchise. Now he's back out looking again for this, and he's got a lot of money tied up in two coaches, Gruden in that lawsuit, and now McDaniels. There are already, you know, names swirling on social media about who could be the next guy. I feel like tw- speaking of Twitter and social media, Jim Harbaugh is like the big name that everybody thinks because of what's going on at Michigan. He could come back to the NFL. Could he make sense? Are there any names that already have come to mind to you or just kind of sit back and take this next step forward? Well, I, I think it's got to be somebody who Mark Davis is like when he gave John Gruden the 10 year contract. Look, he loved John Gruden. You know, and he and he did not see any of the problems with John. He gave him a ten-year contract, and he gave John three years of of losing record. I mean, four and twelve, seven and nine, eight and eight. Right, the best John ever finished was second. I mean, John's record after not after Dungey, when you examine that, has not been good. But he believed in John. I think the most important thing in this next hire is for Mark Davis to believe in the guy. If that's Jim Harbaugh, that'd be great. If it's someone, if it's Antonio Pierce, that's great. But at some point, he's going to have to lay a foundation and believe he's hired the right people to run this. Because if he continues to go down this road where they're blowing draft picks, look, you're playing against Mahomes and Herbert. Yeah. 
you better get your act together pretty quickly or you're not going to catch on to them. And you got Sean Payton there sitting in Denver, right? So it's not an easy division to walk into. You better figure it out quickly. And we'll see. I mean, look, I, I again, I'm not upset. I think this is was I, I think this was inevitable. You could feel it coming. And I felt it after the Monday night game because you could just sense that they didn't have the confidence in the people making those decisions. Looking to the the game ahead this weekend, the Giants have gone from getting two and a half to getting just one and a half in Vegas against the Raiders. I think that flips. When yeah. they name Aiden O'Connell, the star, I mean, first of all, you're putting Aiden O'Connell in a game against Don Martindale's blitz package. That's going to be a challenge. I see this line moving, even though we don't know who the starting quarterback is for the Giants yet. They haven't declared Jones yeah. as the def- starter. We'll know today. But right now it's 2BD. And look, they elevated Tommy DeVito. Think about that. Yeah. Yep, a lot that we need to keep an eye on with this game. And again, for the meantime, Antonio Pierce will be the guy leading the charge for the Las Vegas Raiders. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.